primary media that I like to work with are mosaic tile, uh, vintage finds. I like recycled objects, big on recycling, uh, lampwork beads, and chandelier crystals. And I use a lot of reclaimed wood as well. A great example of one of my pieces where I use all of those elements is this piece here, which is called The Haunting. This piece, when I first found, I found an antique chandelier on, it was either eBay or Etsy. And these busts here are what really intrigued me. They look like they're straight out of a haunted house from 150 years ago. But sadly, when the person I bought it from shipped it to me, they did a very poor job of packing it. And the piece basically arrived uh, mostly broken, except for the three sets of these cool busts. So I, I spent about, I guess, three weeks kind of sitting with it, figuring out how to remodel it. And I reimagined it as a candelabra. So it's got about 2,000 pieces of mosaic tile. About 90% of those are hand cut. It's kind of like making a reverse jigsaw puzzle. Um, I also found three vintage sconces at the Melrose Trading Post just down the street. Um, which worked out perfectly. And then let me show you a few of these other pieces, which I'll show you before I talk about them. Um, this piece here is called Counting Sheep. Uh, I've spent the last year and a half sort of exploring the idea of the wreath as a art form, more so than the traditional, uh, this piece is called the eye, by the way. That is my fire wreath. Uh, this piece is my second beehive, and then, this is one of my jungle wreaths. This one here is called Into the Woods. It's one of my more sort of whimsical pieces. This piece here, I used to use a lot of the, uh, I would find antique grates and old radiant heaters and then sort of reimagine those uh, into little, I guess sort of like mood box units. Uh, and then these are these new pieces I'm working on. These sort of exist as their own insect microcosm. This one's called the Colony. And then I have another version of the hive over here. And then this piece here is a work in progress. It's got crystals and insect pins. Uh, or sorry, they're old brooches that I turned into uh, little decor pieces. Uh, I will often create an entire piece based on one find. This happens kind of a lot. And the eye right behind me is a good example. Um, I have a vendor in Florida, and this vendor sends me these really cool they're vintage uh, beads, lampwork beads and crystals. And she sent me this one set that was uh, sort of swirly yellow, white and black. And when they arrived, they were so cool. I, I thought, you know what, I'm gonna base an entire piece just on these. So I let it percolate for a little while, deciding how I wanted to uh, like make the piece come to fruition. So, Basically, this entire piece started from just one bead that I was really intrigued with. Um, my website, if you want to see more close-ups of any of my pieces, is uh, and there are more detailed photos, is greenphoenixrelics.com. Um, a lot of people ask me why green phoenix relics. Well, the green part, hopefully, obviously, is because I use a lot of recycled elements. Uh, the phoenix part, um, I, I love that I can take these old, rusted, antique tossaways and reimagine them so they have that rebirth like the phoenix. And finally, the relics. Um, I use a lot of vintage pieces, but I also hope that each of the pieces I create will last and be cherished like a relic. Uh, I use recycled corks in almost all of the wreaths. In some of the wreaths, you can't really see them, but in pieces like this one, uh, the counting sheet piece, you can see here where the corks all started. All of the wreaths start with a basic wire frame. I use chandelier corks in the center here so that I can uh, use that for the spacing and then I fill them with corks and then it goes from this to something like these. Um, I have to say I first became interested in art as a child because I grew up in a house of creatives. My dad used to oil paint. Um, he used to do a lot of beautiful stained glass. He did pottery for a while and photography. My mother uh, she was amazing at designing jewelry. She made shell ornaments. She created these beautiful framed mirrors, mobiles, uh, shell baskets. And then my parents would take my, my brother and myself, we would go down to the Sawdust Festival in Laguna Beach and they would sell their, uh, their wares. The cool thing though about my childhood with my, with my creative parents was I learned I didn't have to choose just one medium in art. Uh, in fact, I was encouraged to sort of explore 
uh, any creative outlet that piqued my interest. And one of the things I learned from my mom watching her create all of her jewelry when I was a kid was I learned, uh, look, if you look at the fire wreath here, for example, from watching my mom make jewelry, this, after the, the base was done and after I created the flames uh, and I got the base of it ready to apply all of the antique beads and crystals, um, it was basically like making between 75 and 125 bracelets because all of them are beaded like jewelry. I actually have a client uh, who occasionally will stop at my house and either try and order color specific things or pick something that I already have. And she likes to describe my stuff as, uh, or my art I should say, uh, as jewelry for her home, which I, I like that a lot. It made me very happy when she said that. When I'm not making my art, I have another job. I also work at a hotel that's in Hollywood. And our big, uh, we're in the same complex of the, uh, in Hollywood and Highland where the Dolby Theater and the Dolby Ballroom are. My hotel, um, we take care of the winner's walk for the Oscars every year while the Governor's Ball and the Oscars are over at the other facilities. You talk about learning from work and then learning from your art. One of the things I learned from my job that influenced my art, believe it or not, was working in events. We had a lot of, uh, like in the buffets, when they would set up all these, these buffets, in the old days, they used to take risers. And if they were out of risers, they would use basically anything they could find. It could be a lid cover or a crate, and they would cover it with linen. Um, I sort of learned from that when I was creating art that it didn't matter what I was using underneath my mosaic elements, um, and other parts of my art because you weren't going to see what those were. And so a good example um, for those, I was looking to create these little tiny, like the little lick of the flame for, for my fire piece here, my fire wreath, my fire art wreath. And I was, I kept thinking like, what is like hard enough to look like a flame, but it's thin. And I ended up finding these, they're fossilized Moroccan shark teeth. Now, I ended up using a, well, a cold well gel to attach them to wood, sanded them to look more like the flames. Um, but that's an example of seeing something as one thing and then realizing you can use that for another. And I've done that more than once. But before I talk about the other piece I made with those, um, learning from that, something that I've learned from, that was work to art and then art to my real life is when, anytime when I'm creating a piece, you always come up upon an obstacle where something's not working or something's not fitting together or something doesn't feel right. And I've really learned from my creative process to take a step back and examine all angles of everything and check every single side until I can come up with a solution. And I have really learned from that with my regular life. So I learned from work, some elements that I use with my art, and then also from art to life, which I, I think is pretty cool. When I look at all of the art pieces I've created, I don't think I have any one specific theme. Um, I know there's a couple maybe like recurring themes. Um, I find a lot of nature and the environment are in a lot of my pieces. I've got at least 10 that involved or involve um, like insects, um, wildlife, and I think a lot of that stems from the fact that I care a lot about our environment and our ecosystem, and then when you look out and you see um, how many pesticides are being used in our, uh, in, in our environment that are killing not only a lot of the insects, but a lot of, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna preach, but that's something that goes through my mind a lot. Um, sorry. Uh, and those two pieces, so I, I, I was thinking about when I was thinking about the ecosystems and the, uh, and the environment, that was why these new pieces I'm making, the hive and the colony, I like how they sort of can exist as their own like everlasting microcosm of insects or life. Um, but I like these a lot. Uh, and I like that hopefully that they will pass along that sort of vibe to somebody else who can appreciate them. Um, I think many of my clients, or at least some of them, they can appreciate like the whimsical element that I try and impart to some of my pieces. Uh, when I finished with this piece over here, Into the Woods, it reminds me of kind of like a, a very sort of Disney vibe to it. I mean, I could look at it when I, when I finished it and then there's like little mushrooms, there's birds, there's plant cones, there's owls, dragonflies, there's frogs. 
Um, it looks like the setting where maybe Snow White would have stumbled upon the Seven Dwarfs, but I like that it has that sort of whimsical vibe to it. Um, this weekend would have been my third Beverly Hills art show. Um, I've had great experiences each time. My favorite part is meeting all of the other artists and getting to know many of the regular attendees. Um, the two in a row that I did, I was really surprised it was a lot of the same people and they remembered me and I remembered some of them. And, and that, was, that was cool to like get to know people that way. I usually sell a decent amount of work, which is a bonus at the Beverly Hills Art Show. And I also appreciate um, how they treat their artists just very well. The challenges of doing like outdoor, outdoor shows, um, I think the physical aspect of it, I have four display pillars that I built. They're very heavy. Um, the physical part is, it's just, it is what it is. I've had amazing, amazing experiences. The rewards always uh, definitely outweigh the challenges. One of our attendees would like to know, what would you say um, have been your biggest artistic influences? Well, that's a good question. I feel like I'm kind of, a sponge when it comes to other artists. I'm a huge fan of a lot of the major, like I love Modigliani. There's so many artists that I look at their stuff and I don't understand how they're able to do it because it's so amazing. It's hard for me to pinpoint just one like sort of name or famous modern or uh, no longer here artist, but I would say my parents really, just watching them teach me that you don't have to pick just one thing. You can explore all avenues of creativity. We have another uh, attendee asking, are all your works wreaths? No, they're not all wreaths. Um, the last year and a half, I've been focusing on just sort of exploring the idea or the concept of the wreath as an art form or over the traditional craft, like I said earlier. Um, I'm, I only have two more wreaths planned and I'm gonna be moving on and doing more of these like microcosms. Um, I like the idea of like really, sort of immersing yourself in something for as long as it takes for you to feel like you have sort of washed out or explored, not washed out, but you sort of explored that area. And um, the wreaths, I love making them. It's very therapeutic. I just sort of get lost in my head and I listen to music, but I'm gonna do more of the mosaic elements. And we also have another question. Where do you get your ideas? How long does each art piece take to create? I get inspired by a lot of different stuff. I mentioned earlier um, about getting like one vintage bead that I was just, I thought that was so beautifully created that I, it basically was that one bead inspired this entire piece. Um, and of course I get one idea and then it builds and I think, oh, that would also be kind of cool. And it just sort of grows out from there. But all, I love vintage, uh, vintage items. I collect antique uh, corkscrews. Um, I have a lot of antique elements in my home. Uh, there was about three years ago, I found an antique piece of an old carnival game. It was one of those little, it was either lead or cast iron. It was like a little guy in a racehorse where there would be a bunch of them, but there was only one that was there. And I bought it because I just thought it was like, it had such a specific feeling and memory and vibe to it. And I sat with it for about a month and then I sort of in my mind, I was just kind of like building what I wanted to do. And I wanted to create something that had the setting that suited the vibe of the piece. And so I built a, a mini carnival set and it's got, you know, two mosaic red uh, tent tops. It's got some antique pieces that the, the, the back actually spins and there's two little shooting ducks made out of mosaic tile that also I decided I wanted to have them move. And so I built them onto a Lazy Susan. So the mosaic part actually spins. I just like the idea of having that realism to it. Um, but I, I think I found an old oak table that somebody tossed out in the street and I used that wood. It was all reclaimed wood to build the piece. But yeah, I can get inspired by anything. One more question here. Uh, do you have a dream project you want to create in the future? I always have idea. I don't have, I don't have right now a dream project, but I do have about eight or nine projects where I've started collecting all of the pieces. Um, the person earlier asked the question, how long does a piece take? This piece here from start to finish took almost um, two months to make. And that was from building the wooden base here and then attaching all the pieces and then doing the mosaic element and then adding all of the vintage crystals. Um, the eye that I made here, this has a mosaic element as well. All of the pyramids and then the area around the bottom of the pyramid 
Um, those are all mosaic tile. It took me almost a month just to collect all of the pieces. I mean, all of these pieces, there are thousands of little tiny components that are all come together to make it have the overall vibe and the overall image and vision of what it is. But it took me a month to collect all of the pieces. And then it took me another month, um, almost a month working every single day during my Corona time uh, to complete that. So that was like two months in the making. The majority of my pieces, because the mosaic part of it, uh, you're clipping and nipping and cutting each piece of tile. Most of them, there are thousands of pieces of tile. Um, it honestly takes about a month to two months for all pieces. We have another question. Um, is there an era of design or decor that you prefer or most influences your art? I love antiques of all kinds, but this is my collection of antique corkscrews, which I've got hundreds of them, probably close to a thousand in some of the other cabinets as well. But I love, um, I just love things all from like the, from the old days, from the, from the early 20th century, late 19th century. My mom just gave me some uh, Victorian era, they're, I think they're ale cups, um, and they're like measuring cups made out of copper. But my family is originally from England, and my mom collects antiques, my grandmother collects antiques. Uh, I hope that answered the question. Thank you guys for, uh, for letting me be a part of this. I've really enjoyed it. I'm looking forward to the next Beverly Hills Art Show. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing all the people that come out. I'm looking forward to seeing all the artists again. Um, but thank you guys for doing this. I think it's really cool that we, we can't have a real art show, but we can have a virtual art show, and I think it's great. So I thank you guys, and I thank the city. Thank you.